Good morning, my friends. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso, but in a pinch, you can call me Jig. Welcome to 5-Minute Mindfulness. Today, we're going to conclude our exploration of the first noble truth of suffering by performing three contemplations for sight and three contemplations for phenomena. For just as the eye perceives sights, the mind perceives phenomena. For instance, something intangible like justice or love or peace. You might see something that looks peaceful, but the idea of peace is a phenomena. On the in-breath, please silently and mentally recite, how could not getting a sight I crave when I please, out-breath, be suffering? On the in-breath, ask the rhetorical question, silently and mentally, of course, how could not keeping the sight I crave for as long as I please, out-breath, be suffering? How could enduring a sight I hate, out breath, be suffering? For the next three contemplations, let's explore phenomena and from the perspective of the first noble truth. How could not getting the phenomena I crave when I please be suffering? Personally, when I hear on the news about what happened in Ferguson or what, I, what happened in New York, um, when a man was selling cigarettes on the corner and he was strangled to death by cops and the only person who went to jail was the bystander who recorded it on camera. When I hear that, I, I have this in incredible desire uh, for the phenomena of justice, incredible craving for it that's frustrated because I'm not getting the justice that I feel is required in the time frame that I desire, if at all. Let's move on. How many of us have fallen in love? And that first week or that first month, it's everything's bliss. But after a year or a few years, we might lose the ability to meet our partner's needs or vice versa. 
and we might not be able to hold on to that phenomena uh, of being in love and being so deliriously happy and, we, and it might slip away between our fingers and so that is a great example of this next contemplation. How could not keeping the phenomena I crave for as long as I please be suffering? How could enduring phenomena I hate, I'm going to rephrase that, how could enduring a phenomena I hate be suffering? Now there are some who would say, simple, just stop hating and craving, you'll be fine. Buddha never gave that advice in the Mahasatipatthana Sutta, the Greater Discourse upon the Four Bases of Mindfulness. The only text, by the way, that says in the, both in the beginning and the end that this is the path to enlightenment in one discourse, and that if applied, it can get you there in less than a decade, less than a year, less than a quarter, less than a month, less than a fortnight. That's huge. The thrust of that is not to choose our emotions or, ex or our experiences. We're not instructed to, to reverse the path of contrivance, where we select what we feel and what we see and what we smell and stuff like that. No. We're told to be vulnerable and to notice what we are spontaneously experiencing and then analyze it without agenda. Just analyze it, play with it like a kid with a new toy. That's why I talk about the two A's of awareness and analysis, or the two R's of reciting and relaxing. Let's conclude with a four breath contemplation or a meditation upon metta loving kindness. Let's think about health. One of my teachers used to say, when we go from healthy to sick, we're like a bird falling out of the sky. And let's, to, to, for the sake of building our love, for the sake of building our compassion, let's take a moment to consider uh, non-human animals who um, are enslaved, who are being sexually molested. You know, being artificial insemination without consent is sexual assault. Um, let's look at um, animals that are being tortured and, and murdered for the sake of our pleasure. That is horrible. And at the very least, it's bad health for them. Bad psychological health and bad physical health. So now that our hearts have been pricked, let's take action metaphysically through the simple power of our intention. We start selfishly, health for me, relaxing. Health for neighbors, relaxing. Health for earthlings, relaxing. Health for all beings, relaxing.
Below the video is a little phrase that reads show more. When you click that, that reveals a bunch of free stuff in an area that we call the doodly-doo. So when you scroll down, you'll come to a link. Everything I do is by donation. Some give a lot, some give a little, some give nothing. So if you wish to support the good works of the Buddha Joy Meditation School, you can do so through PayPal, either regularly or as a one-time deal in the amount of your choosing. Um, it helps. I've spent the last year incorporating, and I'm now going through the process of a, a what's it called? Um, applying for a 501c3 tax exempt, federal tax exempt status, which will allow me to apply for grants so I can, I can do more work. You know, it's just that my ability to help others is limited by the support I get. So the mere application process is a financial obstacle for me at this moment. So if you feel like giving even as little as five bucks a month, that would be great. If you can't give, that's okay. You're welcome to watch all the videos you want and play with all the free stuff. My only request is that you actually use it. May our spontaneity ever flow from compassion's centering and letting go. Bye-bye now.